this is the film settings tab of Film Convert, and this is where all the image adjustment functions are located. In the top right, we've got the camera section. So this shot was shot on a Canon 5D Mark II. You've got an exposure control, which is applied to the image before any of the film emulation happens. And you also have a color temperature control. So you can make an adjustment to make it warmer or cooler. And if you want to get back to where you started, hit the reset button, which will take you to no exposure adjustment and daylight color temperature. So the second section is where all the magic happens. This is where you choose your film stock and the associated grain and color. So we're looking at the Canon 5D2 footage through an emulation of Kodak Vision 3 5207. Now if I hit the bypass button, we can look at the original Canon footage. You can see her shirt is kind of saturated. The skin tones are a little bit digital looking. And if we flick back to the film emulation, you can see it instantly looks a lot more like a movie. And there's nothing else applied here. This is literally just the film convert emulation of the Kodak Vision 3. So we have 19 different film stocks emulated. The top section is motion negatives. Then we have three transparency stocks. These are stills slide stocks. The next sections are stills black and white stocks. Below them are the stills color negatives. And finally, we have the Polaroid 600 emulation. So you can actually apply the look of Polaroid to your motion footage, which is something that's unique to Film Convert. You can also flick through the film stocks with these arrows, which is a quick way to audition different looks. The next slider is the amount of film color you want to apply. So it defaults to 100%, but if you wanted to have only the grain, you could take it back to zero, in which case you're looking at the colors from the digital camera. Usually you'd leave that on 100, which brings us to the grain. So probably the best way to check the grain is to hit this zoom button. Now, we're currently looking at a 1080p image, but it's been scaled down to fit the screen. If you hit zoom, now you're looking at one-to-one -one pixels, and you have a panable image, and this will actually play back in real time. This is the best way to check out exactly what's happening with the grain. So if you take it to zero, you're now looking at just the colors of the film stock. This would be a good option if you're not a fan of grain. Otherwise, you can take it all the way up to 200% for a super grainy look. The final control in the film stock section is grain size, and you can choose from all of the common motion formats. 35mm full frame will have the smallest grain particles, Super 16 will be quite a lot larger, and the largest of all is the 8mm stock, which will look a lot like a home movie from the 70s or 60s. Moving on down the screen, we have the standard three-way color corrector. You can adjust the overall color balance of the midtones, highlights, and shadows, as well as adjusting their overall gain or lift. If you want to get back to where you started, hit the X to reset. You also have a saturation slider. Now, let's say, for argument's sake, we're going to add a little bit of coolness to the shadows, a little bit of warmth to the highlights, and we'll move down to the level section. Now you can see that I've actually clipped the highlights in the red and green channel because I've moved my color corrector towards orange. So I can actually just pull down the gain here and prevent that clipping in the high end. Now on the levels graph itself, I can see that I don't have anything close to black. And if I wanted this to be a very high contrast image, I can adjust the black point, bring it up until I start to see it clip a little bit and do the same with the white point. And now I've got a full range image all the way from black to white. I can adjust the center to get it where I want it. And now I'm finished with this particular shot. Let's just compare it to the original. And that's looking a lot more cinematic. So once you've completed a look you like, you can save it as a preset at the button at the top here. And now it appears in my presets window down the bottom left. And the presets window there are factory presets and user presets. You see this one has a number three on it, and that number three is also applied to the shot that's in the viewer. So with any given reel of footage, you're gonna have a lot of shots that were shot on the same setup. So you have a couple of tools here for applying the same look to multiple shots. Select all and select right. If I click the select right button, it's gonna select every single shot to the right of the shot where I'm at. I can then click the number three preset thumbnail, and that will now apply the number three preset to all the selected shots. I can then go and select the next setup, make any adjustments I need to make, save this as a preset, and that's preset four, and now select right again, 
and then click the preset four thumbnail and I've applied preset four to all the subsequent shots. And so you can see, you can quite quickly go through a reel and apply different looks to the different footage you've got. One last feature for those working in film workflows, if you're trying to match digital camera footage to scanned film footage, you can choose to use status M log as the output format. And this is a log format, kind of green looking, and it will match what came off of the ARRI scanner. So here are some renders from the footage we've been using. This is just straight out of the camera and straight out of Film Convert, no color corrector or levels applied. So that was the help file for tab 2 of Film Convert. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the other videos and download the app at filmconvert.com. Thanks for watching.